Did you say you want to learn about MCP servers in VS Code? All right, let me show you. There are a couple different ways you can add MCP servers to Visual Studio Code. The first and easiest one is by going to their official registry or directory, if you will, of MCP servers that they provide on their website code.visualstudio.com slash MCP link will be in the description below. And you can see here all the different tools as you scroll down through all of them that you might want to add to Visual Studio Code with GitHub Copilot and start leveraging it in agentic mode. So I'm going to run with Playwright. I'm going to click on install Playwright. It pops up a message saying open Visual Studio Code. I'm going to click on that. And what that did is it opened up Visual Studio Code for me and brought me to this tab that enables me to install the Playwright MCP server. So I'm going to click on that as well and in an instant it was done. Then to verify that it was installed, you're gonna head on over to the extensions view. You can either press Control Shift X on Windows or Command Shift X on Mac OS. Typically you'll see the installed extensions expanded there, but you minimize that and open up MCP servers and you'll see Playwright is indeed installed here. Another way you can add MCP servers, especially if it's not listed on the official VS Code registry website that you saw before, is via the command pals. You're gonna bring that up by using Control Shift P on Windows and Linux and command shift p on mac os and you're going to say mcp add server now depending on the settings for that mcp server and the documentation for it you might need to choose between command or http and sse or maybe it's via an npm package pip package docker image i'm going to go with command stdio so i'm going to select that and then i'm going to tell it to run the command I need for my MCP server. In this case, it's the sneak MCP server. So I'm gonna run sneak MCP hyphen T and then give it STDIO like that. And I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it sneak. And then what that does is it opens up the MCP JSON file that it has created now for my user settings. And I could see like we added earlier, the playwrights in there and now sneak is in here and it's already running. So we could see that successfully there. Also in the side view extensions view where it lists out the MCP servers that are installed, we can now see the sneak one there as well. Now, if you have used other tools like Claude Code or Claude Desktop on the same machine that you're using Visual Studio Code, and you wanna leverage the MCP servers that you've already set up with those tools, VS Code has a way to automatically discover those for you. Let me show you. If you open up your settings and you're gonna search for chat.mcp.discovery, you're gonna make sure that this is enabled. We can edit in the settings JSON. You can see mine was already set to true. It might be set to false for you, but make sure it's set to true. And what that will do is it will automatically discover any MCP servers that you have on the machine and enable you to add them directly into Visual Studio Code. All right, so to get started with using your MCP servers, you're gonna open up GitHub Copilot in Visual Studio Code. Make sure you are on agent mode and not ask or edit. I've made that mistake before. I'm not gonna let it happen again. And then you're gonna choose which model you wanna work with. I'll go with Claude Sonnet 4 in this case. And then you're gonna click on the configure tools option here. And this is going to show a pop-up with options of tools that are installed for your instance of Visual Studio Code, meaning your MCP server tools that are available to you. So there are some that are built into Visual Studio Code that we see here, but then as you scroll down, you should see the ones that you've installed, like Sneak and Playwright that we showed earlier in the video. So now that those are checked, making sure those are there and available, we can now prompt the Copilot and Claude Sonnet 4 to leverage those tools that are available to it. In this case, I'm gonna have it check the security of the project here. All right, so it first went and analyzed the project because it wasn't familiar with it just yet. It added that context to itself of the package JSON, the server.js app file, and then it said, okay, let me run security scans using Sneak to check for vulnerabilities. First, I'll check authentication status and then run various security scans. So in this case, it wants to make sure that I am authenticated with my Sneak account. So I'm gonna click continue for that. And I'm already authenticated, but if you weren't, it would prompt you to go through an OAuth flow to sign into your account in that regard. Same with other MCP tools that you might be familiar with. And now it wants to run a scan. So I'm gonna choose to let it continue. And it's gonna run another type of scan that we can see here. And it notices that Sneak has some restrictions to it to make sure that you want to first trust the folder that you're gonna be running it within or project you're gonna be running it within. So I'm gonna let it do that, which flashbang opened up my browser and asked if I wanted to trust this path. I'm gonna say yes, go ahead and trust that path. Now I can close that page and go back to Visual Studio Code. Now it's gonna try running those scans again. We're gonna click continue. All right, now that Sneak finished running, Copilot's using Claude Sonnet 4 is checking for 
a manual code review to identify any additional security issues as well. So leveraging the details from Sneak and a little bit of scanning that it's done itself in analyzing the code, it found that there's a cross-site scripting vulnerability in the front end, which is a medium to high severity one, and a NoSQL injection vulnerability that's high as well. Then there's also dependency vulnerabilities that were found, four of them to be exact. There's one in Mongoose, there's one in Express, and there's another one in Express that we could see here. After that, it noticed some other security things to consider, like adding security headers, hard-coded database connection strings that are being used, handling error information more properly, and that sort of thing, which is great to see, so you can learn more from this. And then it even gives recommended fixes that we can do, which is fantastic. So there you saw how to install two different MCP servers in a couple different ways that are available via Visual Studio Code and how to start leveraging them within GitHub Copilot there. Now, if you wanna manage these MCP servers, you have some options to help you out with that as well to make sure you remove the ones that you don't wanna use anymore or limit their capabilities. And a great way to do that is directly from the MCP server view in the extensions view we saw earlier. Let me show you. So coming back over to the extensions view, you can see those MCP servers that are installed. You can right click on them. You can choose to start the server, stop it, restart it if you've already done that and uninstalled if you'd like. So I'll click on that. We'll see it has now been uninstalled and I have the option to install it again if I'd like to. Same goes with any other MCP servers that are already set up on your instance of Visual Studio Code. Another way you can go about doing this is by opening up your user configuration via the command palette again. Your MCP open user configuration, that first option there, which brings you back to this MCP JSON file. And right off the top, let me make some space here. You have some options directly over each instance of an MCP server that you have configured via the servers object here. You have some annotations above it that give you the option to start the server, show configuration for it, show output, configure the model access and browse resources. This right here can allow you to limit access to this MCP server to specific models via GitHub Copilot. So when I click on that, this one is set to GPT 4.1, but you can also override that and add more other default options if you'd like to. Last but not least, one quick tip. If you tend to use Visual Studio Code on different machines between a desktop, a laptop, maybe cloud development environments like GitHub Codespaces, you are likely utilizing setting sync and you're going to want to be able to have your MCP servers accessible on any device that you're using Visual Studio Code. And the way you can do that is via setting sync. So just go into Visual Studio Code, double check your setting sync is on and configured in this way by selecting setting sync configure and make sure the MCP servers option is selected here. And that way these MCP servers you've set up are being synced along with your settings. That wraps up everything I wanted to show you on getting started setting up MCP servers in Visual Studio Code. But I'm curious, what MCP servers are you finding yourself using the most? Let me know in the comments below. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.